We begin today with a developing situation nationwide as well as here in San Diego. Protests continue after a black man was shot by police in Wisconsin. That man, Jacob Blake, is now paralyzed, according to his attorney. Here was the scene in San Diego last night. About 50 people showed up at the SDPD headquarters downtown. Three people were arrested, including one for allegedly hitting an officer with a cane. And today, a local lawmaker introduced legislation that would change the way that law enforcement uses force at protests. Our Andrew Nomura starts us off live from downtown. Andrew? Well, Maria, Assembly Member Lorena Gonzalez is spearheading Assembly Bill 66. It will be the first bill of its kind in the nation that would uh, limit the use of force against protesters. And we spoke to racial and social justice advocates today. Protests have erupted across the country once again after Jacob Blake, a black man, was shot seven times by police in Wisconsin. Now, a bill in the California Assembly is taking aim at law enforcement's use of force against demonstrators. So we set out to create a bill that would have clear standards um, for the use of these uh, weapons in the future. During a virtual conference, Assembly Member Lorena Gonzalez introduced AB 66, a first for the nation. The bill would set standards on how police use less lethal weapons against protesters. The bill would do a number of things, including prohibiting the use of kinetic projectiles, chemical agents, and tear gas. And this is the inspiration, my inspiration for initially introducing this bill. Survivors of police use of force spoke out, including Leslie Furcron, a 59-year-old grandmother who was shot in the face with a projectile when protests broke out in La Mesa after the death of George Floyd. And these weapons are serious and shouldn't have never be shot into a crowd like the La Mesa Police Department did. We need this. I have been pepper sprayed more than I can count. Ermeek Glass Blake is the director of Generation Justice, an organization youth movement fighting for police reform. She says this is a great start in the right direction. So we need to make sure that those of us who are on the front lines, those of us who are um, being targeted um, and, and do this work because we're really truly fighting for justice um, are protected. Well, also in this bill, lawmakers citing their reasoning, showing research and studies that show the amount of people who have been injured by projectiles at these protests, also saying and citing health warnings from health officials saying that uh, the use of tear gas could potentially amplify the spread of COVID-19, saying that tear gas uh, irritates the lungs and forces people to cough. For now, we're live here in downtown. I'm Andrew Nomura, Fox 5 News.